you so much for joining me today. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your work with clinical trials. Here at Big Data, we're, we're talking about how to acquire data, but part of your work is talking about how to improve how we collect data. So tell me a little bit about that. Not just in the clinical trials world are we interested in collecting data differently, and I'll talk about that. We're also interested in how to utilize data that we already have in the clinical trial setting. So let me separate them. Okay. And in the first, we're very interested, for example, in the notion of can we use smartphone technology, can we use social media to actually collect information for uh, clinical trials? Can we get your demographic data that way? Can we get your follow-up data that way? So we're, we're embarking on a number of projects uh, where we're using digital technology, social media technology to try to improve the clinical trials process. On the other side is what about data that already exists that traditionally has been used for observational mm -hmm. research? We're trying to embed randomization on top of that, for example, in the EHR. The as electronic the health record. Use the electronic health record as the clinical trial data set. Hmm. So even taking old data sets like Framingham, for example, and trying to bring them to the 21st century? Is May, that... Maybe the best example is we're involved in a project now with, uh, with PCORI, the Patient Centered Outcomes Research Institute, and the NIH, where utilization of a series of electronic health records from around the country, we're going to identify people who have coronary disease and ask them to be randomized to a study of one dose of aspirin versus a second. So this is for people with, with heart attacks? People of, who have had heart attack heart or at risk for heart attacks. And, um, and no one actually knows what's the appropriate dose of aspirin, which seems crazy. It we've does been seem crazy. Been, How do we not know that? We've been using it for 100 years. Nobody's actually studied it. Wow. And now we're going to try to utilize the data from the electronic health record to study it. So what would be the next question that you'd want to tackle with this data? If this works, and I always put the big if, and to me, the, the aspirin question in some ways is a fairly pedestrian question. Yeah. It's like, you responded the same way most people do, which is what, we don't know that? <laughs> um, I think then there are a whole series of questions. It's interesting in cardiology, which is my field, um, only about 25% of what we do in cardiology is actually supported by the highest level of evidence, meaning randomized clinical trials. So when you say, what are you gonna do next? We got 75% of what we do so that we, have we to don't prove have. All of this. We have a whole bunch of things we, we'd like to prove. We'd like to, you know, know different doses of ACE inhibitors, uh, drugs that you might take for high blood pressure or for heart failure. We'd like to understand um, how much exercise do you need, how much sleep do you need for cardiovascular health. There's so many things that we could study that I think would provide important insight to patients and to providers if we had better methods to do it. As a physician, I'm recommending many things to my patients, and it sounds like you know, I feel a little bad a lot about it's not backed by evidence. It's interesting. It's if, if patients really understood how little we definitively know, I think patients would be even more excited about helping us answer these questions. I totally agree with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me.